Hi guys, uh, net. two videos in a week here, I'm on a roll. Um, okay, this one is called um, No Go To No Ways, uh, and it's aimed at guys like me that can't afford to go to, uh, but still have to find their way around the sky, find their targets. Now this uh, tutorial is going to introduce you to a website called astrometry.net. Uh, those of you that use Flickr may be familiar with the astrometry group. Uh, you submit an image and uh, it comes back with uh, your image solved, tells you what's in the image. Um, the website, astrometry.net, uh, does a similar thing. It uses a, a technique called plate solving uh, to tell you um, what's in the image you've just submitted, but it does it a hell of a lot quicker uh, than it does on Flickr, within a few seconds, in fact. Now, what you can see on your screen at the moment is uh, Stellarium, um, which is uh, the um, Sky software that I use. Um, there's there's loads of these available, but this is still area, it's free, um, and it tells me where stuff is if I don't know. Now, for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to use M31, so I'm going to do Control F, uh, put in M31, and it takes me there. There you go, in the centre of the screen, Great Nebula and Andromeda. Uh, now, I've picked M31 purely because I've done it recently, so it's all convenient, but um, and a lot of people would already know where where M31 is anyway. But for the more obscure objects. Um, it's useful to know where the object is in relation to a nearby constellation. I'll explain why in a minute um, when we get to that bit. And also, if you look up here uh, in the top left-hand corner, it gives you the coordinates of the object. Now, Andromeda, we, it's a deck we're interested in. Forget the RA for now. Uh, but the deck is just over 41 degrees, and uh, and we're going to use that as well later on. Cool transition, folks. Um, OK, what you're looking at now is my camera control software. Um, I use an old Nikon. I've got my D40 connected to this. I normally use a D70, which is uh, connected to my scope at the moment, so I'm not using that. Um, I'm, I'm sitting indoors doing this. I'm not outside doing this live, guys. Uh, so uh, I've got my D40 connected. Now, N Nikon camera control is a bit rubbish, really. Um, you can only use up to uh, 30 seconds uh, with a, a Nikon camera control. You have to use the infrared uh, for anything on bulb. So I've got a special bit of kit made for that. Now, I've got this on screen at the moment to give you something to look at while I blabber on about setting circles and bore you rigid. Um, specifically, the deck setting circle, which is the one at the uh, top of your weight shaft and looks like this. There you go. Hopefully, you can see that. That's an image courtesy of opticsmart.com. That's the website, I think. Um, this is the deck setting circle, and uh, that's what we're going to talk about very briefly. Uh, now, what I'm about to show you depends on a, a few things. Uh, there's a few prerequisites, if you like, and one of those prerequisites is that you're um, reasonably well polar aligned. Uh, I'm not going to cover polar alignment in this uh, tutorial because it'll take too long, but there's loads of stuff on the internet about polar alignment, so um, if you if you look it up, um, it should give you an idea of how to polar align if you don't already know. Um, now, this is an image of a setting circle on a celestial mount, I think. Uh, mine's an EQ5, but it looks exactly the same as this. Um, where my mouse is, there's a little pointer there. You probably can't see it that clearly. Uh, a little sort of arrow, uh, and that's important because that's um, the pointer that we use to set the, uh, the deck coordinate. Now you're going to do a very rough setting initially, just sort of point your scope at Polaris uh, in the general direction of, uh, and then move the setting circle so that 90 uh, is underneath that little pointer. Now you'll see that there's two 90s on the setting circle, don't worry about that. Uh, just put A90 underneath that pointer, uh, and your setting circle is now very roughly set. Now the reason we set it to 90 is because that's where Polaris is, guys, 90 degrees. The celestial equator is uh, 0 degrees, um, and if you don't know where the equator is in your skies the next time you see Orion go by, uh, the belt, uh, not the belt, yeah the belt, uh, more or less follows the equator, um, so that tells you where the celestial equator is, that's 0 degrees, and Polaris is at 90. Uh, now I'm talking about Polaris and stuff because I live in the northern hemisphere, if you're in the southern hemisphere I do apologise, I uh, can't really help you on this bit but uh, bear with me. Now the next thing you want to do is um, is set, if you remember M31 when we looked at Solarium was um, 41 degrees or just over, um, so you want to set 41 degrees in your, uh, in your deck setting circle so that it's like 41 degrees underneath that pointer. Um, there, there, you, you'll actually notice that there are two, two 40 degrees, there's two of everything on this uh, on this setting circle. Um, if you've got the wrong one it would be kind of obvious because you'll be pointing in the wrong direction. Um, so set the correct uh, 41 degrees uh, on the deck axis and then lock your deck axis, uh, and then swing it around in RA until you're pointing in the 
approximate direction of Andromeda. You've got to have a little bit of knowledge of the skies here, guys, to be able to do this. You've got to know roughly where your target is, Andromeda in this case, for the purposes of this exercise. Uh, but you've got to you've got to know roughly where your target is in relation to a nearby um, constellation, which is why I suggested you sort of make a note of that when you look at Stellarium to see sort of where it is in relation to the nearest constellation. Right, back to uh, my camera control software. Now, the other thing, the, so the other prerequisite uh, for this uh, uh, this system, this tutorial, um, is that you're connected, your camera is connected to your laptop. Um, it doesn't have to be. I mean, you can run in and out uh, with your memory card, um, but that's a little bit clumsy. Um, so if you can connect your laptop to, um, if you've got a laptop, um, to your camera uh, with a cable so that you can control the camera from your laptop and download images from the camera, uh, then it's going to make this an awful lot easier. Um, you want, uh, as far as storage goes, uh, your, your camera control software will probably be different than mine, but uh, you can set JPEG or WAR or JPEG and WAR in here. Um, for this uh, exercise, what we're doing here, you want it set to JPEG. Uh, that's fine because you're, only, you're going to be submitting images to a website and you want to do it fairly quickly. So you don't want to, it won't accept WAR images anyway, so you want that set to JPEG. So remember that. Um, and so you, you get your scopes pointing in, in the general direction of where you want to be uh, and take a quick five second exposure uh, and hopefully that will download the image um, to your laptop uh, and that's what you can see hopefully on screen here. Hopefully you can see those stars. I can see them and I hope you can see them as well. Okay, here we go. Astrometry.net uh, web address live.astrometry.net No www in that guys. Just live.astrometry.net. It's on the screen. Um, if you look up here, uh, the first panel uh, it says new, we have launched a new version of our web service, please see nova.astrometry.net. I've tried that and I don't like it. You might like it, uh, I don't. Uh, I prefer the old version which is this one. Uh, and as far as I'm aware, I've spoken to the guy or emailed him, there's no plans to take this one down. Um, so this is uh, here, at least for the time being. Uh, but uh, this is uh, what the website should look like. If you don't look like this, you're on the wrong website. Now, first thing you need to do, scroll down a bit, and you go down to here, required information, email. Put your email address in there. Now, once you've done it once, it remembers. Uh, so that's my email address. And name is Doug. Just, I just double click and it brings up the old ones that I've entered before. Click on remember me. That's useful because uh, you're going to keep coming. You'll, you'll come back to it two or three times, maybe maybe more. And uh, if you've got that ticked, the next time you go back to it, you're, th these will be filled in. Okay, that's that bit. Okay, next thing to do is uh, upload the image. So click on this browse button here, not this one down here, the one at the top. Click on browse um, and navigate to where your image is saved, which you can generally uh, specify in your camera control software. Uh, mine automatically goes there because it remembers it, it remembers the location where you uploaded your last image. Uh, in a real time session, you'd probably only have one image uh, in this folder. I've got a few for the purposes of this demonstration. Um, but uh, in a real-time session, that would be the image you've just taken that you're uploading. So I'm going to click on that one, click on open, and that populates this box here with the uh, uh, the path to the image. Okay, having done that, scroll down a bit, down to the bottom. Um, and this is where we give the website an idea of um, the size of our image. Um, I click on this one here, estimate plus or minus error, the estimate of the width of your field. Now using the ED80 my field's about just over two degrees um, using the 200p that I used to use it was just over one degree um, so it, it helps to know what the the you know roughly what field size your image is um, you can use this bounds lower bound 0.1 upper bound 180 that's in degrees uh, up here that's set in here in degrees um, that could take a while to solve um, so if you've got an idea of what your uh, uh, your field sizes then put it in here so I'm going to put two there and the per percentage error can be anything really uh, I'm going to select 20 but it could be it could be any number you want um, so it gives you a, it does give you a fair old uh, a fair old choice you've got a, a lot of room for error here now having done all that I'm going to hit the submit button I'm going to do this in real time guys this gives you an actual idea of, uh, of how long this actually takes to solve your image uh, so hit the submit button uh, and then we talk amongst ourselves while this thing works it out. That little window comes up, you've just seen appear on the left hand side there, that little sort of blank window, just minimise that, don't close it down. Because um, I suspect if you close it down something horrible will happen, but uh, um, 
I normally just minimize it and you won't see it again the next time you come back to this if you have to submit another image assuming you haven't got spot on your target first try which you probably won't um, that window doesn't come up again um, so we'll just sit here and wait for this thing to uh, do its stuff it doesn't take long uh, normally 20 oh there you go sorted uh, click on that link there it says status page click on that and you get this coming up in real time guys Now, what does this tell us? Uh, first of all, it tells you the width of your field and the height of your, the depth of your field. Uh, mine is 2.24 times 1.49, so that's useful to know if you didn't already know. Uh, it also tells you where the RA and deck is of your field. Deck is at 42.957 degrees, so we're a little bit out. Uh, should have been set at just over 41, if we remember, and we actually set at nearly 43 at the moment, so I've got to move the deck a little bit. Um, what else does it tell you? Um, not a great deal. If we click in view in Google Maps browser, click on that and it opens this window there we go, stars and your image should be overlaid, ok now that doesn't tell you a great deal at the moment so you've got some links up here, click on Messier objects that link and click on constellations there, ok now if we scroll out a bit by uh, clicking on the uh, minus button on the left hand side here, zoom out not scroll out, zoom out, what am I talking about? OK, here we go. Look at that. That's where they are. M110, M31, M32. So this weren't bad. I was very close to it. I cheated, actually. Uh, the actual series of uh, subs that I took when I was... Uh, last session I was doing on M31, I was miles away. I had to come back in, so I'll cheat. Just to, quick, just to quick, quicken this thing up a bit, just to make it a bit speedier. Um, this was about my third sub, I think. Um, OK, so, that, so we're fairly close. Now, the only drawback with this Google Maps thing is that all it shows you is Messier objects, M's. It doesn't show you ICs or NGCs or anything like that. Um, astrometry does, but we'll come back to that. But for the time being, we know we want to go right a bit. Make sure you know what way your image, up, your image is up. Make sure you know which is up and which is down, which is left and which is right. Look at the stars in it and then compare it with the image on your camera control software You know that you took. Make sure you know which is up uh, and which is down. So we want to go right a bit and we want to come down a bit. Um, OK. So we now go back to our camera control software and we make uh, an adjustment. Well, you can make an adjustment to your mount first before you go back to your camera control software. It doesn't matter what way you do it. Um, so you know roughly what way you need to go. You make a, a small adjustment in the deck and the RA um, according to what you've seen. Um, whether you use the slow-mo knobs or whether you use the buttons, assuming you've got a motorised mount, uh, is up to you. It really depends on how much you need to move. So we take another image, uh, and that's the next image I took, uh, image 3074. So we've done that, and now we go back to astrometry. Now I've got it saved in my bookmarks toolbar up here, so I just click on that button and it launches astrometry again. Uh, it's remembered uh, the email address of my name because I ticked on remember me. Click on the browse button again. Upload your next image, which is uh, 3074, that one there, that's the, the, the last one I took. Uh, click on open and then scroll down in here. We know it's two degrees because we saw it at uh, uh, last time we submitted an image, uh, two point something. Over roughly 20%. Double click on them boxes and it will bring up what you've previously entered. And then click on submit. And I'm going to pause it for a second now while it's. Uh, there you go. I paused that. It wasn't that quick. Um, it doesn't take too long now. What, 20 seconds, 30 seconds or so? Okay. Click on the status page. And there we go. Still not in the field. So I click on. Uh, if it was in the field, it would say so here. If it was in your field of view. And it's not. So we click on Google Maps browser again. OK, click on Meso Objects. We won't worry about constellations this time. And uh, zoom out. Where are they? Zoom out again. There they are. <laughs> I showed you this deliberately. Sometimes you go in the wrong direction, and I did on this occasion. I went the wrong way. Um, so we've got to make another adjustment to get it, to get them back. So we make another adjustment to our mount. We go back to our camera control software, and so it goes on. And we take another image. Um, it's good, this, isn't it? Um, now, if I click on the image, get rid of that box. There it is. That's Andromeda. 
or the core of it anyway. Um, so we're there. Uh, and we now just need to make adjustments to the mount to, uh, to centre that. But I'm going to submit this image to astrometry anyway, uh, just to show you uh, what it looks like when you've got uh, the object in your field of view. Okay, back to astrometry.net. Email address and name already populated. Uh, click on the browse button. Bosh, there you go. Uh, 3075, I think, is the last one. Click on open. And then down here, 2 degrees, 20%. Click on submit. And pause the video while he thinks about it. Okay, there we go. Status page, click on that. And we now, now see your field contains M110, M32, M31. If you scroll down to this window here, we can see them. Uh, and this is where it would show NGCs and RCs and what have you in astrometry, but not in Google Maps. So if you add your, your uh, and I think most of the catalogs are in here, something a bit more obscure, it would be shown in here if it was in your field of view. We can still look at it in Google Maps, click on our link. And then click on Mesa Objects. And there's the labels that come out, they're in your field of view now. Okay. Now I'm going to submit uh, another image just to uh, demonstrate something. So I'll go back to uh, the front page, they're already populated, click on Browse. I'm going to submit this one here, 2365. That's an old image I took with the uh, reflector. Uh, and that's one degree plus or minus fifty percent. So I click on submit. Pause the video. There we go. Click on uh, status. Now your field contains NGC five double two nine, which I think is a rather obscure galaxy. Scroll down. There it is in the field of view. NGC five double two nine. But if we click on Google Maps, uh, there is no NGC in there because it doesn't show them. Click on Meso Objects. M51 Whirlpool is down here. That's obviously what I was searching for at that time. Uh, because Google Maps only shows the Messier objects. It doesn't show any of the other catalogs. So the NGC uh, isn't shown there. Um, that was just to demonstrate that point. It's shown in astrometry, the, you know, the catalog that they use on their site. But when it goes through the Google Maps, all we can see is the Messier objects. So that's something worth bearing in mind. And it's a good idea to know where your target is in relation to a nearby constellation. Okay, now astrometry is a, a very useful site. It's extremely useful. I mean, I find when I'm out there, I use it. All, I rely on it. I'm, I'm dependent upon astrometry. Uh, if I'm out there and it goes down, and it does occasionally go down the site, uh, I'm lost. Uh, can't find my way around uh, without doing it the hard way. Um, so um, it is extreme, and occasionally it fails. You'll, you'll occasionally submit an image that fails, and that might be because you've got the field size wrong or something like that. But uh, it does occasionally go wrong, not too often, thank God. Um, but uh, yeah, it certainly beats uh, putting an eyepiece on your scope and then star hopping for an hour and then putting your camera on it, etc., etc. This would have probably taken about, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes maybe. Probably about as long as it takes to put in your three stars if you've got to go to. So uh, probably even beats that. Um, anyway, all right, guys, that's the end of this one. Uh, rather a long one. It took me a while. I hope somebody finds it useful because it uh, did take me a fair while, this one. Um, I'm sure somebody will. I hope somebody doesn't put a comment on this video and say, what on earth do you do that for? Why don't you do it this way and come up with some incredibly simple way that I've never even heard of? That's going to be a bit embarrassing. Uh, anyway, all right, guys. I'll sure speak to you again soon. Cheers.